So the third question from 2020 is definitely, or sorry, from 2019, is definitely a very important question. Um, so again, going back to what the College Board has told us, FRQ1 on the 2020 test will come from the FRQ3 advertise here. So uh, they, if, if everything was going normal this year, our third question would have been an array, array list. With the modified exam in 2020, that means that your first question will come from the array, array list section. And so uh, if you look back to 2019's question three, this was their array slash array list question. And uh, it was a classic user defined class kind of thing here, except this, it's, it's not really a class so much as, as this concept of a, a delimiter. So what is a, a delimiter? Well, it's just some kind of string, okay? And, and it doesn't really matter what it is, it can be different ones. But, but some strings are chosen to be delimiters and it doesn't really matter what they are. And some are labeled as open and some are labeled as closed. Um, and so we're gonna write a class called delimiters that has two instance fields, uh, both are strings, one's an open del and one's a closed del. We're writing code in this class so we have access to them. Um, the constructor has already gone ahead and initialized them for us so we don't have to worry about that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some work where they give us a string of tokens um, and we have to make an array list of strings out of some of those tokens, okay? So like they have to qualify as an open delimiter or a closed delimiter uh, to be considered a uh, part of this array list. And then later we'll determine if our array list is balanced and they give us a definition of what that means. Um, okay, so again, we knew this problem was gonna have an array and or an array list. It actually turned out to have both. Uh, all right, and if we look at part A, um, just one thing to note, tokens is just like the name of the array that they hand you. So they, they use that word tokens a few times. The token is just a string, okay? So it's an array of strings. So think of a token as just being a string. You get a token uh, and then you can ask if it's an open DEL or a closed DEL with the string equals method. Right? So if you have two strings, you can see if they're equal. And if they are, they go into the array list and anything from the tokens array that doesn't match one of the two instance fields of this class uh, would not be added to the array list. So it's just, a, it's just an if scenario. If it is, it gets added. If not, don't worry about it. And then uh, we'll have to return this array list when we're finished. So that's probably the last big piece of the puzzle here is that we have to understand that this method was not handed an array list. No array list belongs to this class. Uh, so we'll have to create one on our own so that later we can return it. And so that's the very first thing I would do if, if I were writing this, this uh, answer is, before anything else, I'm just gonna go ahead and create an array list. And if, if you want to call it like DELs for delimiters or something, you can. And you have to know the syntax for how to create an array list, okay? You're going to the constructor. And then later, when we're done, we're gonna return it, all right? In the middle, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to every one of these tokens. And like I said, tokens are strings, okay? So give me one of those strings from the tokens array, and then I have a question about it. It's actually a two-part question that token um, could either equal the open del that belongs to this class, okay? Or that token could equal the closed del that belongs to this class. Remember, open del or closed del, those are the two instance fields that I was told belong to the class that I'm writing code in. They're both strings and they represent the two things that I'm searching for. If I find either of them, Okay, then I will permit that token to get added to my list. Sometimes when I add things to a list, I go to a constructor and I try to encapsulate the object. I don't need to do that here. This array list was built to hold strings. The array that they're giving me also holds strings. So it's already like perfectly set up. I can take it straight from the array and put it straight into the array list. I don't need to modify it at all. Okay, so now I have a delimiter list. Okay, moving on to part B, we have to figure out if it's balanced. So what is a balanced uh, delimiter list? Okay, 
it's true uh, if it says it's balanced when both of the following conditions are satisfied. So notice, notice that it's not good enough to just have one. Okay, we have to have both uh, of these things occurring. When traversing the array list from left to right, uh, there's no point at which there are more closed delimiters than open delimiters at or before that point. Okay, so that doesn't mean just at the end. That, that's like at every step of the way, we can never have more closes than opens. So I think we'll have to have like two running counters then. Uh, one for the close, one for the open. I guess you could do one counter that kind of goes up and down. If it hits negative, then, then that's bad. Or if it makes more sense to you to just make two different counters, that's fine. I, I don't really see it being a big deal either way. Like I said here, we're gonna have to check this condition with each pass of the loop, okay? Because it says, you know, like at any time, there's no point. Then statement two says the total number of open delimiters is equal to the total number of closed delimiters. Well, notice how they're putting the word total in there now. That wasn't in part A. So total implies at the end. So we'll check this condition only when the loop is finished. All right. Very important to distinguish between those two. So there's no point in time or total. It's like during and then at the end. So two different checks there, all right? And uh, we'll know that they're open or closed um, based on if they equal one of the instance fields. In fact, uh, one of the preconditions here, which we, we can use says, delimiters only contains open and closed delimiters that are valid. So we really can set this up like an if else, like if it's open del, we'll count it. Otherwise it has to be a closed del. There's no, there's no third option. Now, if you, if you didn't do that, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal, but you could based on that precondition. All right, so like I said, I kind of see like two counters here. Although I, I can see a way to do it with one also. So we've got our opens and our closes. Um, it's kind of weird grammar, but oh well. All right, and then um, in the end, we're gonna be returning if those two things equal each other, okay? Uh, in the middle, remember, we're checking at every pass, like the state of them compared to each other. So if closes ever goes past opens, then we have to be a little bit worried. All right, so again, I see kind of an enhanced for each loop here that traverses from left to right anyway. So hand me one of those delimiters uh, from the delimiters. I always have to check the spelling of delimiters. So hand me one of those delimiters from the list named delimiters. All right, so Again, this delimiter is a string. It's, it's not some weird object. So we can just apply the string equals method to it. We can ask if it's an open del. Uh, and if it is an open del, I'm simply going to count it as such, okay? Like I said, due to that precondition, we can just, if it's not open, it's gotta be closed. There's, there's no third option. Uh, and then, like I said, once we've got that figured out, okay? What we could then do is we could say if closes has exceeded opens at any point, any pass of the loop, we can immediately return false. Now, if this if this is false, I can't say true. Okay, so there, there's no else attached to this. We're only looking for falses uh, within the body of the loop. Okay, true can't happen until the very end when we go on to that second. Uh, condition. All right, so if we look here, um, yeah, that looks good. And here we've got our delimiters with the slash Qs. Should get two trues and then four falses. That's perfect. Um, I was just kind of feeding it the same examples that you know you see here. I, I, I guess I put in some other ones. So you can go look at my sample code if you wanted to see. Um, all right, so anyway. Yeah, looks great. Again, not not a ton of code here, you know. Really, I mean, um, you know, not a whole lot. So don't don't think more is better.